Which action camera is better, the GoPro Hero 12 or the DJI Action 4? Now the thing that I look for the most in an action camera is the image and the colours and they are getting better and better. But I want to find out which one is best. And obviously I'm going to go through a few other features as well, things like the stabilisation modes and the usability of the cameras. But we're also going to chuck it on an FPV drone because I've got Danny Boy here. Hello. He can't see me at the moment but he's, uh, he's waving. <laughs> I've got no idea where you are. Here? I might just walk off and leave him actually. <laughs> It's a little bit of a uh, overcast day, so it's not the best visibility for an action camera or a drone. But I'm going to see what shots we get, so let me know which one's your favourite in the comments below. sent both of these action cameras to review but nobody's paid me to make this video so this is a totally unbiased opinion and I want to help you make the decision as well if you're looking for an action camera in 2023 or 2024. I always get excited when small affordable cameras especially action cameras include a log profile within them because you think I'm gonna get more dynamic range and more flexibility over the colors but at the same time it makes me skeptical because how good are these sensors and how good is the log profile? Currently recording in log on both of the action cameras so it's d-log m on the action 4 and it's gp log on the gopro so i want to see which one looks best i want to see which one is easiest to color grade looks most natural and which one has the most flexibility so this is the log profiles right now auto white balance and auto exposure on both cameras which way did you go this way tell me which one you prefer we're used to using D-Log in things like drones, so we know that it's good. But GoPro have got GP-Log. It was the first time I've ever tried it. And I have to say, it's not great, I'm sorry. It's a very soft image to the point where it looks like it's out of focus. It doesn't look like a log profile. It's still saturated, there's hardly any detail, and you can't really do much to the colours. It kind of looks better when you just leave it as it is but it just still doesn't look right. I'm a little bit disappointed because I really want to like the GoPros but for that reason with the DJI D-Log M you have so much more control over your colour grading you're gonna get more flexibility and be able to colour grade your footage how you want it to look. Then this is standard mode on both cameras. I think it's called normal mode on the DJI Action 4 and standard on the GoPro. So these are the colours. So if you don't like colour grading you can choose the normal modes, then you don't have to do anything. Everything's taken care of for you. But which one do you prefer the look of? Which colours do you like straight out of camera? Which one would you choose for that reason? God, I nearly went. The colours coming out of the standard mode on the GoPro look really, really nice. Very impressed. The dynamic range is a little bit better again. And I tested the 3 versus the GoPro 11, and that was the same then. However, the Action 4 has improved the dynamic range. So it looks fantastic, but still there's a little bit more detail in the clouds and the sky and the highlights on the GoPro. I did notice one thing though. It looks very digitally sharp. So you'll see in the shadows or the detailed areas that it's a little bit crunchy a little bit mushy but if you bring the shadows up a little bit you can hide that slightly so you can change the sharpness my sharpness was on medium at the time you can go to high but I'd probably set it to low give it a go I didn't get a chance to test that so I mean that might help We've got HDR mode on the GoPro so that's gonna give you more dynamic range supposedly now when I was testing it it looks fantastic if you're in a well-lit environment the highlights are great it retains a lot of detail and color in the clouds and the sky but then it's a little bit dark in the shadowy areas so you try and raise the shadows and bring up some of that detail but what happens is the colors start to become mushy and pixelated not good at all so we don't want that there's less detail in the clouds and the sky on the DJI but you've got much more flexibility over your grading with this camera so if that's what you want the Action 4 is definitely the way to go. We're mounting the DJI Action 4 to the Avata right now. That's really heavy. <laughs> Are you scared? I think that's that's almost as heavy as the actual drone. Tell me Danny boy is it gonna come back in one piece? Probably not. <laughs> I, I have no idea what's gonna happen right now. All right let's do it. Yeah, wow, that's so heavy. Oh, bad. Oh. Gone. 
gone. Right. Where the f is that? <laughs> Down there somewhere. Well, he was right. What happened then? Uh, I didn't think there was a bit of branch, a small, tiny little bit of branch. Danny boy, you know what? You, you know, <laughs> go and have a look for it, shall we? <laughs> Sorry. Crushed. Right, while those two bozos are looking for the drone, should we uh, should we talk about the menu system? First thing I've noticed, the GoPro is a lot more difficult to get set up because the menu system is not as intuitive as the DJI. Now, I think DJI have done a fantastic job of making all of their products really user-friendly and intuitive with the menu system. If you've never used a camera before, you can swipe around and find whatever it is you're looking for within a couple of swipes or taps. Obviously, because I'm not used to GoPro, I found it a little bit clunky to use whatever I wanted to change I couldn't find it to begin with it took a while but they have got this thing where you can change it from kind of a beginner mode to a more advanced professional mode and that changes the menu system and gives you different functions and features now personally I don't see the point in that because surely you just want all the features at your fingertips and it's not like it's clearing the screen up for you because there's still stuff on the screen I just like to have access to everything that I need in one go I see why they've done it it. I don't think it's necessary. Just give us everything where it needs to be. The touch screen on the DJI is faster than it is on the GoPro. It's very clunky to use the GoPro and I find myself clicking things twice and then it catches up with me and then I've clicked on the wrong thing. So that's a bit frustrating at times. You can also turn the sounds off of the DJI. So when you switch it on, it's silent. It's not going to disturb anything if you need to be a quiet in an environment. GoPro you can only turn the volume down to low, so you can't turn it off. As far as I know, I've not been able to find that yet. Listen how loud that is. And then the, and then the DJI. It's off. Nobody knows. Nobody knows you're filming. It's discreet. I like it. The smoke. Oh my God. Right, there's smoke coming from down there and something just blew up. It's on fire. It's, fi it's on fire. I think he's just got to it now, so he's gonna see what state it's in, but didn't look good. Actual flames. I'm not going down, because I've not got the, uh, the footwear for this terrain. Uh, I need you to come down. All right, I'm coming. To open the battery door of the GoPro, you have to really get your nails in and pull down on that door. I do like how there is only one door, so you can access your battery and your memory card and your USB port in one door. Whereas on the DJI, you've got your battery and your memory card in one door, your USB in the other. But much prefer the way you open the doors on the DJI. You just slide that bit down and then open the door and that's it. Love it. DJI wins hands down with the magnetic system for two reasons. One, it, it's easy, it's secure, it's quicker than screwing in the little plate that you have to put on on the GoPro. I prefer this. Yes, you've got that there, but you only need it to set the angle of the camera. And then obviously as well, if you've got the cage on, you can go from horizontal mode to vertical mode, just like that. Well done, DJI. So we've got a bit of battery there. We've got a bit of battery there. Another bit there. That's your drone, mate. <laughs> uh, I slipped off a rock. You're right. That looks nasty. God, don't I can't, even, I can't even stand up. That's from trying to cling on. Look at that. Oh yeah. What, what's missing from this? The. <laughs> Yeah, no action, Mission cam. action camera. Yeah, it can't be far. It can't. Well, everything was here. And if not, I'll buy you one. I've never felt this guilty in my entire life. Uh, here you go. Take take the camera back before I smash that and all. <laughs> and then both cameras have a number of different options for focal lengths. For example, linear, wide, super view and hyper view on the GoPro, and then standard on the DJI wide and ultra wide. I find the DJI to be a lot wider than the GoPro. So this is the widest it goes on the Action 4, and as wide as it goes on the GoPro as well, so. But it makes my face look a little bit slim and alien-like at times, so it's not great for vlogging. I stick to standard or wide most of the time. As you see, the ultra wide makes me look very, very gaunt. And uh, that's the last thing I need.
So what I like about the DJI is the screen at the front that I can see now is actually a touch screen, so you can change the settings. The GoPro one isn't. So if you want to change settings, you have to spin the camera around. So on the GoPro, we've got hyper smooth and then hyper smooth auto boost stabilization modes. So we're going to test the hyper smooth first versus the DJI Action 4 rock steady. You ready, Danny boy? Rocksteady Plus on the DJI Action 4 versus Hyper Smooth Auto Boost. Yeah. We've gone to where the drone hit the tree, that branch there, in the hopes that we can find it up here, not where the drone crashed. I'm on the DJI Mimo app and it's saying there's a connection found. So the camera's got to be around this area. Definitely. Whoa, 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 whoa. You've not. <gasps> And it survived. Look. And it's still recording. Is it alive? We're still recording after all this time. Not a single, apart from a, a scratch here and there, no damage whatsoever. We got it. There you go, mate. Thanks, mate. It's a pleasure. It's been recording for 54 minutes. So the only, only damage to today is my pride and uh, my FPV drone. Looks like DJI, I'll be getting in touch with you real soon, mate. <laughs> Should we go back up there? So I guess we kind of put the durability of the DJI to the test. Now I wasn't going to replicate that experiment with the GoPro because that was enough stress for one day. But it survived. It survived a crash from high up in the air. I only got one little scrape there on the top. And that's it. I mean, I consider myself very lucky that whatever it landed on, it didn't smash the lens or the screen. It's still in one piece and I was able to retrieve the footage. Probably going to be the same story for the GoPro. Extremely well built, so I trust both of them. That's what they're built for at the end of the day. Well, n not to be thrown around and, you know. You know, it's an action cam. I just want to point out that although I showed the drone crashing and smoking, this isn't a bad advert for DJI. Obviously, it was a mistake by Danny Boy, bless him. He's not a bad pilot usually. I think <laughs> just at a moment. Take care when you're flying a drone. Obey all the rules. There was no one around, obviously, so nobody got hurt, which is good. If you are going to fly an FPV drone or any drone, make sure you've got some sort of insurance and slash or cover. Luckily, Danny Boy did, so he's got another drone on the way, which is fantastic. That was good news. Um, so we're able to laugh about it now. <laughs> right, there was one, he's laughing. There was one moment where I slipped off a big rock and I had my camera strapped here and I, I had to, I clung on to the nearest rock for dear life with my fingertips. What it was like, you know when you watch cartoons like Looney Tunes or something and you see the character go off the edge of the cliff and you see the legs going like that really, really fast. That's exactly what it was like. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I was clinging on for dear life to that rock. It was my best friend. It all comes down to what you need and your preferences. Usually, I take the image and the colours over anything else. But when it comes to an action camera, I feel like it needs to be a little bit more than that. It's the way you use it. Because they're quite limiting as they are, they're very small, quite difficult to use. I want it to be quick, I want it to work. I need to just be fast. I don't want to fiddle around with something. So I feel like in this case, although I might have to do a little bit more work color grading with this camera over the GoPro and just using it in standard mode, I feel like the way this is set up and all the accessories as well, which are fantastic by the way, the way you charge the batteries, the way you open the doors, everything that I've mentioned, the way you mount it, so much more user friendly than the GoPro in my opinion. I love the aesthetics of the GoPro. I love the branding, it looks really nice. I like this little new f blue fleck that they've got going on I would definitely go for the DJI let me know which one you prefer in the comments below and also if you've not seen it yet DJI have released the Osmo Pocket 3 highly recommend checking out if you're thinking about getting a small compact vlogging camera I'll leave that video here for you to watch anyway have a good one and I'll see you next time mm -hmm.